Hello students. Today we will discuss about income from house property. This is the second head of income out of the five heads for calculating gross total income for income tax purposes. In this annual value of the houses and the lands upper tenant thereto for which assessee is the owner and he is not using this property for his business or profession is considered these properties are chargeable to tax under this head two important rules for this are house property means constructed house only piece of land cannot be considered as house property and another is that the owner of the house property should be the assessee if he is not the owner then this will not be considered as his income from house property under this head so now how can we calculate annual value because tax is charged on the annual value of house property so we should know the calculation and computation of annual value of these house properties for this house properties may be classified as let out house property and self occupied house property in let out house property there are two options whether the let out house property is let out three out the previous year or it was vacant during the whole or any part of the previous year for these two cases we will find out the calculation of annual value and next option was self occupied house property in this the property can be self occupied throughout the year by the assessee it could not be self occupied because of employment of assessee at any other place and third option is it can be self occupied for part of the previous year and let out for part of the previous year so in this third option both of the things will be considered now determination of annual value to find out net annual value on which the tax will be calculated first we will find out the gross annual value and from that municipal taxes will be deducted so gross annual value less municipal taxes will give us net annual value and these municipal taxes are the taxes paid by the assessee during the previous year now one by one we will consider the cases and we will find out the gross annual value in first case let us assume that the property has been let out that the house property has been let out throughout the previous year in this we have three steps first is computation of expected rent expected rent means fair rent or municipal valuation whichever is higher so out of fair rent and municipal valuation whichever is higher will be taken as expected rent and if standard rent is also given then expected rent cannot be more than the standard rent that means out of the expected rent and standard rent whichever is lower that will be considered in step 2 computation of rent received or receivable this means annual rent minus unrealized rent this will give us the rent received step 3 is gross annual value is equal to step 1 or step more step 1 or step 2 whichever is more so out of the expected rent and rent received whichever is more will be considered as gross annual value let us have a look at this illustration for calculating gross annual value in this question shri hari is the owner of following properties and from the information given below we have to find out the gross annual value in each case for the assessment year 2020-21 efgh are the properties 
municipal valuation is given fair rent is given standard rent is also given actual rent and unrealized rent for these are given so now in this case step 1 will be calculation of expected rent let us see let us have a look at e property e property in e property municipal valuation or fair rent whichever is higher so out of the two amounts of municipal valuation and fair rent 84000 is higher so this will be the expected rent and standard rent is given 60000 for this property so expect out of expected rent and standard rent the amount of step 1 will be considered whichever is lower so out of 84000 and 60000 since 60000 is lower so this will be the value of step 1 now in step 2 annual rent or rent received or rent receivable is considered actual rent excluding unrealized rent was 72000 in this case so out of 60000 and 72000 step 3 will be calculation of gross annual value and out of the higher amounts of 1 and 2 whichever is more is considered so now 60 and 72 72000 will be the value of gross annual value of property e similarly in case f let us have a look municipal value or fair rent whichever is higher so here 72000 is higher standard rent is 54000 so out of 72 and 54 lower will be considered for step 1 so 54000 will be considered in step 2 actual rent is 48000 so now out of step 1 and step 2 we have to take higher value as gross annual value so out of 54000 and 48000 54000 is higher so gross annual value in case of property f will be 54000 similarly for g and for h property next case is let out for some period during the previous year so in the first case the property was let out for throughout the previous year in this case it is let out for some period during the previous year that means for some period during the previous year it was vacant in this case step 1 will be same as in case of let out throughout the previous year which we discussed right now step 2 will also be same step 3 will also be same and step 4 will be gross annual value will be equal to step 3 less rent of vacant period so when we get gross annual value in step 3 we will deduct rent of vacant period from this and then we will get the final gross annual value for let out property which was vacant for some period during the previous year and after finding out gross annual value municipal taxes will be deducted and this will give us net annual value now let us have a look at this illustration shri mohan is owner of three house properties x y and z from the following information find out the gross annual value in each case for the assessment year 2020 21 for x municipal valuation is 24000 fair rent is 30000 standard rent is not given rent received or receivable for let out period is 27000 period for which the house remained vacant is 3 months unrealized rent for previous year 1920 was 3000 so similarly details of y and z are also given now let us have a look at x property for determining expected rent municipal valuation or fair rent whichever is higher will be considered so here 30000 is higher standard rent is not given so na is not applicable so whichever is lower out of a and b 
will be considered as expected rent so 30000 will be the expected rent as per step 1 in step 2 rent received or receivable if let out throughout the year will be considered so in this case excluding unrealized rent rent receivable was 33000 let us have a look at the question in the question rent receivable rent received was given 27000 and unrealized rent was given 3000 so period for which the house was vacant was 3 months so that means rent received is the rent for 9 months because out of 12 months 3 months were vacant so 9 months rent received is 27000 that means per month rent was 3000 3000 into 12 is 36000 so out of 36000 of annual rent rent for the full year was 36000 unrealized rent was 3 so out of 36 minus 3000 now we get rent received or receivable if let out throughout the year in step 2 as 33000 so now hope you understand how we got this 33000 we got this let us let me again repeat this we got this by dividing 27000 by 9 months then we got 3000 rupees rent per month 3000 per month into 12 months will give us 36000 for the full year out of 36000 3000 is unrealized rent that means out of 36 33 has been received so 33000 will be considered for step 2 now step 3 is higher of amounts as per step 1 or step 2 so out of 30000 or 33000 higher amount is 33000 from this step 4 will be rent of vacancy period to be deducted now rent of vacancy period was 3 months into 3000 rupees per month so 33000 minus 9000 will give us 24000 Similarly for y and z properties we can find out the gross annual value Now determination of gross annual value in case of self occupied house property in this only one will be considered as self occupied Let us take the cases now case 1 or case a is self occupied throughout the year the annual value for self occupied house which is self occupied throughout the year is taken as nil in case b self occupied for part of the previous year and let out for part of the previous year annual value will be calculated in the same manner as we discussed let out house property few minutes back so if it is self occupied throughout the year the annual value is nil if it is not and if it is let out for some part it is self occupied for some some part we will consider the same case as it has been let out house property now deductions from annual value income tax act allows few deductions from annual value of the house property in case of let out house property there are two deductions one is standard deduction which is allowed at the rate of 30% of annual value and interest on borrowed capital whatever interest is paid or payable during the previous year on loan taken for construction or for purchase of the house or for maybe repairs or renewals then they are allowed as deduction in case of self occupied house property interest on borrowed capital is allowed as deduction in this case we have two options if the loan is taken before 1st april 1999 maximum allowable deduction is 30000 and if the loan is taken on or after 1st april 1999 the maximum amount allowed as deduction will be rupees 2 lakh 
important rules to be remembered for this are interest regarding previous year is fully deductible and interest regarding construction period is equally deductible in five years so the full amount of interest on borrowed capital is to be considered fully deductible for the previous year and for the construction period it has to be equally deductible in five years so one fifth of the interest will be taken into consideration for one previous year and construction period now what do you mean by construction period this means date of loan to 31st march just before the date of construction so whatever the date of construction is given just before that date whatever 31st march is coming date of loan to that 31st march will be taken as construction period also to be remembered here is if municipal taxes paid by owner during previous year are more than gross annual value then annual value will be negative so annual value of the house property can be negative also deduction for self occupied houses can be claimed for two houses only which can be selected by the assessee so these are important rules to be remembered and this completes our topic income from house property we will discuss further questions in our further classes thank you and have a nice day